This is podcast. Hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of my podcast, Podcast Racing. Uh, today, uh, I have yet again another really good friend uh, who has never been on the podcast before. Please welcome my good friend, Cecilia. How are you doing, Cecilia? Hi, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So what we're going to be talking about on the podcast today is we're going to be talking about whether movies like have a responsibility towards like moral messages or political correctness, uh, you know, like uh, feminist ideals or basically like Hollywood is definitely more aware of that kind of stuff now. And I want to ask you if you approve of, you know, more stuff like that being in movies or if like that bothers you when there's like politics or like feminism or something like that in movies. Okay, okay, yeah. Should I just start talking about Yeah, yeah. I- so ba- yeah, basically <laughs> just um yeah, if you want to answer that question, do you agree with movies being more like progressive, including like moral messages, political correctness, etc., or do you disagree with that uh with that? Um, I'm trying I took some notes before this to try and organize my thoughts. So, let me see. So, I feel like I don't know. I think sort of the idea that I think there's like a weirdness about this kind of thing in that like people think that it's it's like strange, I guess. Like there's like a certain s- section of the population that like thinks it is odd to like see like non-binary people acting or like non-binary roles or like trans roles or trans people playing playing cis people or trans people like i don't know like people think it's weird to see different people represented i guess that aren't like the normal like uh cis white man of a upper class <laughs> you know which is like i mean we talk about that a lot in film theory like that's sort of the the norm is like the straight is white man of a upper class and everyone else is sort of like gets uh thrown by the wayside and like um delegitimized in some way and i think it's like so i guess maybe that's why people don't like it is because like there is sort of like a, a norm uh in terms of like what like culturally um has been on the screen and like the people who have controlled what we see in like media but like i feel like it, it's strange that people it's kind of, at least to me, like, as a college student who's, like, friends with non-binary people, trans people, like, learns about, you know, critical race theory and, and feminist theory and stuff like that, it's strange to me that, like, people don't want to see people represented. Because I feel like it, it just makes sense, like, if you, if you have, like, more, more women who get to, like, make films and di- do directing and stuff, like, of course there's going to be they're going to say their stories like it's not like that i don't know or like if you have like you know i think like also some people are like have like weird ideas about like sort of racially dividing up content and stuff like that and it's like well like why why are people uncomfortable with marginalized voices telling their stories um i don't see a problem with it i guess and i i feel like that's sort of like yeah like it's not I don't know, I don't see it as being something that is a bad, or like, I don't see it being something that's like a strange thing. Like if you're, if you're given a platform to tell a story that's important to you, you would tell a story that's important to you. So like, it's strange that people think that it's like a weird thing not to tell a story about like a, you know, straight white male of upper class. And that's like something that's revolutionary and strange and like too woke. It's like, no, that's just the way people live, and that's just what, people just are that way, so, like, why wouldn't we show it? Because I feel like, like, to go see a movie or read a story is, like, to get a slice of life is the whole point, or, like, to see, to see something in the world that you might not see otherwise. I don't know if that makes sense. No, no, I, uh, I completely agree with you. Yeah, everything that you just said basically makes sense, so... Uh, if you've been list- if you listen to my podcast, you know that based on my opinions I've shared, I am definitely more like liberal. And like you, I've also 
have, I'm friends with, you know, trans people, gay people, non-binary people. And yeah, I think that, you know, uh, telling, uh, I think that, you know, it's great that their stories are being told and that, you know, there, there's more of an awareness of like proper representation. I do think that occasion, I do think that it is bad if by putting one group up, you're putting another group down. Like for example, in the uh, Black uh, Christmas remake, there it's great that you know that has a, that's a very feminist movie, but but also they're basically portraying every single male character in that movie as like a terrible person, and they do the same thing in the Ghostbusters remake as well with uh, Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy, and I, I think that that's bad when you by when when you by putting a one group up, you think that you have to put another group down. But when you're just putting, you know, people up and, you know, including proper representation and good, like, political correctness, basically, I think that that's good. It, it, as long as you're not, like, harming anybody or, you know, saying that the opposite of that group is bad. Yeah, I agree. I also think you there is, like, I guess some situations where people want to put characters in the story solely for, like, you know like tokenism or like I don't know winning points with certain uh certain demographics and I think that's also like a big pitfall is like I don't know kind of just what I was saying earlier like it makes sense to have people tell stories that are real to them and like obviously you you wouldn't like every movie you write isn't going to be like about your life it's not a biography but like if you write something that you really have no sort of understanding of I think that's also like a problem when they like someone's like oh I want to write about you know I don't know like the the gay experience or something like that but they write it in a way that is like sort of delegitimizing or like harmful because they haven't done their research I think that's also like a problem that, that actually is kind of I feel like mainstream media probably has a lot of that issue where like it's like and maybe that's why people some people don't like it for being too woke or something is like the fact that it's really not that woke, <laughs> like, people think it's woke, but it's really, it's not, like, I don't know, it, it doesn't actually uh, tell, like, underrepresented stories, it just, like, uh, tokenizes people, so I feel like that's another problem that might be, you know, maybe why uh, some people don't like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, I, I it really bothers me when, like, if you're, if you're a man who directs a very female-centric, female empowerment uh, story, then you have to do it, like, really well, and you have to get good female perspectives and opinions on your story before telling it. Yeah, because, yeah, that, that, that bothers me as well when, you know, like, straight writers will write about gay people or, you know, white people will try to make black stories as stories about black people, and it's just, like, that, that, that bothers me as well. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely, like, because I, I, I think there was also, like, some controversy about the Tiger Woods. This, this like, summer, they started talking about the, the Tiger Woods. I don't know if it's going to be a documentary or sort of, like, a, a, a biopic or something. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> I know that's just how I pronounce it. But, like, um, everyone was really mad when, like, sort of the list of people working on it was released. And it was, like, almost all white people or maybe all white people. And they were like, why couldn't we have... Like, I feel like it's also, like, you don't want to bar anyone from working on a story they're passionate about, but it's, like, when you when you have, like, a, a group that, like, should be giving input that isn't giving input, that's, like, kind of sketchy. And, yeah, it's, like, time to, like, reevaluate sort of why, you know, no one who is, yeah, like, no one who is a certain identity is, like, being allowed to voice their opinion on how they're being represented. That's really problematic. You and I were actually talking the other day. Uh, I haven't played this, but uh, you mentioned that The Last of Us Part Two is very, like, that got controversy because apparently I haven't played the game personally myself. I've only played the first one, but the, uh, the second one is apparently very, like, political and, like, progressive and that, like, bothered a lot of people. But you think that that, like, that people being bothered by that is ridiculous? Yeah, I, I feel like it's just really, it's, it's, that's kind of what I was saying earlier, like, that whole thing, like, people are like, that's too, 
I don't know. I'm sorry I keep using the word woke. It's like not an official term at all, but I feel like it's sort of like in the idea of like get woke, go broke. They were like, this is way too like progressive and like, but like the thing is that it, it really, there's sort of like a weird uh, double think that happens where people are like, oh, if gay people or like trans people or Native American people or whatever, whatever, you know, uh, marginalized group, they're like, if these people are part of the story, then it has to be to further the story in some way. Like, they just can't exist as regular human beings. And so people get mad, like, seeing, like, there's, I don't want to spoil too much, but there's, like, a lot of sort of, like, LGBTQ plus characters in The Last of Us, which is, which has been, like, sort of known. Like, it's not like they just made them, I, I feel like people act like they, like, oh, like, why did you make all these characters gay or something? It's like, they've been gay. They, they're canonically gay like since years ago when like dlc content was released but like it's just these people are just existing in the world and that that's like just part of their character and like that's just who they are and like it's just strange that then people are like people get mad because they're like well there's no reason for them to be gay or whatever and they're like that doesn't like what do you think the real world is like you know like people don't i don't know people don't become gay because it's, it's like I, I don't know like it's just strange that there's sort of a, there's, you're not allowed to just have, like, people existing in the world as their identity. And so I think that's, because that, because I thought The Last of Us did a really good job of sort of, like, not being in your face about, like, oh my gosh, this character is a lesbian, whoa, like, that's her main character trait. It was, like, really, she just, that's, like, just part of who she is, and she does other things as well, and it's not, like, they're not, like, making a big deal to, like, tr try to, like, I don't know, make a play of, like, tokenizing her or anything. Like, she's just a person, and she's also gay. But, like, people thought that was, like, unnecessary in some way. And it's, like, that's just, like, a representation of real life. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe like, people who don't live in sort of as, as uh, urban area or, like, as progressive an area. Because, like, usually I live in a college town or something. But it's like you encounter all different types of people all the time. So it seems very strange to me that you wouldn't want to see them represented in like a real, like, I don't know, a, a real, uh, <laughs> or a, like a, a, a piece of media that's supposed to be like portraying like a slice of life. Like, why wouldn't you want everyone to be there? I don't know. That's, yeah, that's just my take. I feel like I kind of already said that, but it's the same yeah. thing in The Last of Us. No, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. It's just, uh, I just have to remind, you know, uh, everybody that, uh, you know, you and I, we uh, mostly encounter with and live in very, quote unquote, or we've ex exposed to a very, like, progressive community and setting. Like, I think both you and I, the settings that we were in, you know, while attending college were very diverse and, uh, you know, I guess, like, liberal in a way uh correct me if i'm wrong if like the a lot of people at your school would you consider them to be like liberal yeah i think i think honestly most college campus well i mean not liberal i feel like at my school definitely like I, I, well i don't want to be like i don't want to say anything like that people will find bad but i feel like a lot of college campuses are more like leftist mm, like they're yeah. disillusioned with the liberal like agenda i don't know what to call it but, like, I don't know, yeah, because, like, kids are reading, sort of, you read all this, like, theory and stuff, and you learn things you don't learn in high school. Like, I feel like a lot of, sort of, school curriculum is, sort of, sneakily avoids, like, problems with the U.S. I feel like that was, like, a big thing when I went to college, is, like, I just learned a lot of things about the U.S. that I never really knew or understood that were, like, negative. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, I should change my point of view about some of these things. And, like, yeah, I feel like a lot of my friends are like that as well. Like, people are very sort of aware and, and definitely lean left as opposed to right. And then, like, there's, like, at least on my campus, there's, like, certain kind of groups of people who are right-leaning. But I guess it just depends on where you hang out. But I think on a whole, yeah, I would say it's, like, sort of a left-leaning place and most colleges i think are probably uh, exactly you and i went to uh colleges we were exposed to uh environments that were more progressive like forward thinking diverse 
And a lot of the people, I'm not saying all, you know, people that are against uh, politics in The Last of Us Part Two are like this, but a lot of people that are, you know, not so keen on, like, politics and progressiveness of any kind, whether it be minor or major and stuff like Last of Us Part Two, uh, yeah, a lot of those people, not all, but many of those people uh, are from very, the, uh, are from very different environments than what you and I were exposed to. Those people, you know, are in more, many of them are more conservative and mostly, you know, white, you know, environments. And so like, and so their, their perspectives, while I don't think that, I think that it would be nice if like those people were, could be exposed to more different ways of like thinking and living, but it is a bit understandable. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think, like, I think that's also part of sort of, like, it's just, like, for, for like, me and my friends, like, I don't know, when I think about, like, like, the term identity politics, I don't like, I guess, because I'm, like, I feel like, I feel like, um, I don't know, like, yes, there are a lot of issues that go along with, like, being a marginalized person for like lots of my friends and lots of people I go to school with and lots of people around the world but like that shouldn't mean that like it's political to just be that like I don't know yeah like because like for me it's like I have lots of friends who sort of fit into these groups that like are used for tokenization or whatever big companies want to call diversity or something like that and it's like for me that's just like a normal part of life I just live my life with them and I like go to school with them and so it's not like strange and for yeah I feel like for people who grow up in different environments it's like weird to see someone who's not like you and I definitely understand that because I went to high school in a place that like I went my high school was like so homogenous and so it was like a really big sort of like yeah it's change in like culture difference coming to like a really like left leaning place that like had a lot more people so I agree I agree I think it totally depends on where and that changed my point of view a lot like just being around people who are different from me so I feel like it definitely does sort of depend on you know what you're exposed to that definitely depends uh that definitely you know like uh, changes your perspectives and uh views on things at least for me it definitely does because it despite you know me being Asian I grew up in a uh, town in New Jersey and went to school where in a, in a town where, you know, most of my classmates were white, most of the community was white, and there weren't that many, uh, you know, there weren't that many people of uh, different ethnicities. So I kind of always viewed myself and agreed with very, like, white and conservative points of views. Like, I didn't see myself as Korean at all. I just saw myself as, you know, just straight up American. And it wasn't until, you know, college where I was, I was suddenly thrown into a much more diverse and progressive environment. It wasn't until then when I started to, you know, consider other people's points of views a lot more and also, you know, look at, you know, myself and uh, stop seeing myself as strictly just, you know, American. Yeah, I definitely, and I feel like that's, like, a, just a big difference, like, yeah, like, when it's, like, a normal thing for you to encounter, like, LGBTQ plus people or people of different races, like, when that's, like, a normal thing, then it doesn't feel so, like, it doesn't feel like a political question, I guess, whereas, like, people who don't interact with all, like, who don't live in a place where there's, like, lots of different identities or different types of people then it's like this can be a more abstract question of like oh why is this idea like floating in the background of my video game or my movie or whatever when like I don't know for for people who like interact with all kinds of people all the time it's like less of a political question and more of just like a like this is just life this is just how life is people are different yeah I don't know if that yeah. makes sense yeah, and, and also when I'm watching film, especially when I'm watching films with very uh, feminist uh, ideals and, you know, promoting women's rights and all that, I have to keep in mind that 
you know, like if, if there's something in the film that seems like foreign or like strange to me, that I have to keep in mind that, you know, I'm not a woman and, you know, I'll never, because I'm a man, I'll never, I can empathize, but I'll never truly be able to uh, see and fully comprehend, you know, a female perspective. And, uh, but I can definitely, you know, uh, sympathize for sure, but I'll never truly like, like, so I basically, I have to, you know, keep myself in check when watching very, you know, like films with, you know, like uh, different types of politics and, you know, like perspectives than what I'm used to. Like, for example, there's this uh, very recent film that came out it's called Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always, which is about a teenage girl. She lives in a state where they do not approve of abortions at all. And so she has to get an abortion and she and her cousin go to New York to get an abortion. And, it, and throughout the film, basically the film uh, has been praised by critics for telling a very raw and, you know, like, a, a, and, not, a, and not necessarily empowering, but I guess like, like raw and like intimate, like mm -hmm. female uh, driven and uh, female inspiring uh, story, you know, it obviously the film was direct, written and directed by a female. It obviously stars, you know, yeah. women, and uh, it's a bit, it is, it is, it, and I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily call it a feminist film, but it does portray a lot of the men in that film are portrayed as, you know, like being like jerks or like ignorant, or you know, occasionally a couple of them are just straight up like a holes. Now, you know, as a guy, I could watch that film and be like, oh, this is so unrealistic. This is basically portraying that, this is basically saying that all guys are bad. And as a guy, I'm offended and I could, you know, say stupid crap like that. But to, I have to keep in mind when watching this film that what if that's the director's unfortunate experience where every guy, almost every guy in her life has basically been really rude to her or around her and like yeah and then what if she's just telling what she knows and so you know everybody uh, has, a, has a different experience and uh and, and and i don't think she is necessarily saying this director is necessarily saying that all you know guys are bad i mean it's a possibility that she's just sharing what she know what she knows and war what she's unfortunately had to experience yeah, I totally agree. I feel like it, it is like, yeah, like there's sometimes it's like an impulse to see your, like yourself or like your identity represented poorly and you're like, hey, wait a second. Or like even for some people to see other, other groups represented well, even sometimes people will get like annoyed that like, I don't know, this person or that person was like, held on too high a pedestal in the film or whatever but then it's like you know like I don't know yeah you just have to sort of it's good to be critical and like I feel like you know not I mean very rarely will any sort of media be perfect if ever so like you should like you should have some level of like criticism and like thought about it like you should think about it and not just like absorb it wholeheartedly but, like, I think also it's important to, like, keep an open mind and be, like, you know, I need to check my own issues at the door and listen. Yeah, exactly. Just, like, listen to, like, a different point of view. It's, like, really important. And, like, to allow people the space to tell their stories and not immediately be, like, oh, that's not true. Yeah, I feel like that, yeah. I don't know. Or that's boring. I feel like I, I watched one film. I oh my gosh, I forget the name, but it was sort of like, um, I guess someone would say feminist or political or something. I don't know what the word people would use to describe it, but it was like about this woman who like was witnessing like sexual assaults at her work. And like, she had to like, she kept trying to like tell people about it. And they kept being like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, it's not a big deal. And like, I watched it and with some people and someone was like, that was just really boring. Nothing happened. And I was like, oh, I feel like it was such like a, yeah, like such a sort of incisive or incisive, I don't know how to say that word, 
um, like a, a very deep look into this person's life and like this sort of difficult emotional struggle that she's going through. But like, I, I don't know, I feel like discounting stuff like that as being like, oh, boring or, or like, oh, not true. Or even like, you know, in certain things where like one group is sort of like very homogenous and like depicted as bad. Like, you also have to think about, okay, well, like, yeah, what is the director trying to say here, if anything? Like, it's not, it's not always going to be sort of a one-to-one -one picture of the real world that people should take offense at, if that makes sense. So, like, no, yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. And uh, something else, I think that it's, you know, not right to, but, you know, like, for a film, if a film is very feminist, and if it, but if it portrays all male characters as being a-holes or idiots or whatever i don't think that's right but something else to keep in mind is that unfortunately way more often than not uh in comparison uh women uh minorities you know people in the lgbt community have been portrayed in a negative light yeah way 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 more than straight white men have in movies and shows and that's really unfortunate but that is reality and so to get all, if, if, like, a film, like, the, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could get all riled up over, oh, the Ghostbusters remake is basically, like, all men are, uh, it portrays all men as bad, and as a man, I'm offended by that. Sure, you could get offended by that, but in my opinion, that's just a waste of time, because, like, me, yeah, it's a waste of time, and it's ignoring the facts that, Unfortunately, this has been the case for women for, and, you know, uh, and black people and gay people and trans people for way, way, way longer and more often than it has for white men. Yeah, I, that totally, I totally agree. Yeah, and it's also hard to, like, say, it's hard to sort of make a case about one movie. I totally agree. Like, it's, it's like, it's, you have to sort of think about sort of it in the context of, you know, everything everything up until that point and then also like sort of what the movie itself might be trying to say or like the way it's composed like it's it's very sort of yeah I feel like looking at like one sort of aspect of it and discounting it for that or like you know looking at the way it portrays one group and like yeah I agree like I don't like when it's like one group is consistently portrayed badly like even if it's you know men or whatever but like it's like there's some sort of point that perhaps the director is trying to make and like it's not going to be maybe and also like I feel like it's such a it's a, still an art form like you sometimes have to over exaggerate or underplay or whatever like you can't have which sucks like every everything can be nuanced but like there's only a certain amount of nuance you can get in like an hour and 30 minutes which, like, I, some films do better than others, I feel like. So, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. And, um, but, but going back to um, what you said about that Tiger Woods biopic, that actually reminded me, there's an upcoming um, biopic about uh, Serena Williams, oh. and it's going to focus on her as a little girl and her and her sister dealing with their father, uh, Richard Williams. And uh, Will Smith has been cast to play Serena, Serena, uh, Serena Williams' father, Richard Williams. And a, uh, that got some controversy, that casting, because the real-life Richard Williams has very, very dark skin. And Will Smith, you know, like, is, uh, is also black, but his skin is a lot lighter. And so... A lot of people are like, oh, they should have cast an actor like Idris Elba, who has a much closer skin color to Richard Williams and Will Smith does. But then other people are like, oh, but that's racist. You like saying that, oh, like uh, that, oh, like a uh, darker skinned uh, black person has to play like, you know, like focusing so much on the color of their skin is racist in itself. And uh, I you I don't know I don't know if this is like your very first time hearing of the Will Smith cast as Richard Williams, but I want I was curious to hear like your thoughts on that. If you uh, if you agree with you know the people against the Will Smith casting, or if you think that the naysayers are 
being kind of racist by pointing out the skin color. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's actually the first time I've heard about I heard about that specific thing. I think I have heard about the Serena Williams everything, but I haven't heard that specific, I don't know, piece of information. <laughs> but I, yeah, it's so, I, I was actually kind of doing a similar, uh, I was, I just watched The Happiest Season or something. It's a new movie on Hulu. Yeah, I've and, seen it. Yeah, there were a lot of people who were up in arms because Kristen Stewart is part of the LGBT plus community but the other main character is actually not like she's a straight person playing a a lesbian person she got a lot of sort of i don't know flack for that but then kristen stewart was like i I didn't read the whole article actually because i was just looking it up uh for a second i was gonna go back to it later i guess or maybe i wasn't gonna go back to it can i shred the headline kristen stewart was like well it's a slippery slope to always cast people exactly as they like are in real life And it's, like, really, yeah, like, it's really hard to, like, I don't, yeah, it's, like, so hard to make sort of a judgment on, on anything. Like, yeah, and even, like, when I think about, like, like, because I do creative writing as, like, a concentration, and I do, like, screenwriting and, and story, like, fiction writing and stuff, and, like, when I write things, I don't usually, like, specify, like, oh, this person is this race, unless it's, like, that, that's, like, because I don't want to just throw it in there and, like, not have that be a part of their character, like, a legitimate part of their character, but, like, I was thinking, like, I was doing, I was in a screenwriting class, and, like, I wrote both of the characters as white, because I didn't want to, like, you know, project onto, like, anyone else's, I didn't want to, like, assume anyone else's sort of life journey or whatever and like I'm white so I was like okay I know I know that this is like I know I'm writing something that is like relevant to like what I know and I don't want to like assume anything but then like I was thinking to myself like I wouldn't like I would cast whoever was best for the part like no matter what they no matter their sexual orientation or you know their um race and then I was thinking you know but then I would want to cater them I would want to cater the movie to make sure that they felt that they were telling an accurate story if that makes sense like I would want to like talk to them and be like hey if there's like if there are things that you don't think are like well written or like genuine to like what you bring to this character then that's not fair to you and I think we should rewrite scenes if you if you feel like you could bring a different sort of feeling to it or a different backstory or a a different your own personal experiences like would inflect the character and I want to like I want you to be able to do that if you want to and so like I feel like that's like a really hard thing because like yeah like some people would probably say Will Smith is the best person to play the character I don't know anything about the story so I don't know so they would say it's like some people would probably say he's the best actor to play the character for the role And that's, like, totally valid, but then obviously other people are going to say, like, that's so, you know, this feeds so much into, like, colorism uh, to have him play it instead of someone else who's equally as good, who has darker skin color. And so it's, like, it's just, like, such a, I don't know, yeah, I feel like being the person who would make those decisions, I guess he would sort of, because then if you, if you cast someone who looks exactly like the person I mean I guess that's sort of the the best scenario but then you need to find someone who act also is like going to act the role well I mean I don't know the role so I guess I wouldn't know how and what to say but I feel like maybe that's like sort of where the controversy comes in partially is that like they were like well we feel we feel like Will Smith will do a good job even if it's not completely accurate But then it's like, well, you could have been more accurate and you could have found someone who would do a good job. You know, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? It's such a hard, those kinds of things are so hard. And obviously, like, I also don't really, like, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm, like, allowed to have a a dog totally in that, dog in that fight. Oh, that's kind of like a bad uh, (laughs) euphemism, or not euphemism, bad saying to say, I guess, because we don't endorse dog fighting on this podcast, probably. (laughs) But like, oh yeah, no dog fighting. Yeah, we do not endorse <laughs> dog fighting in this podcast at all. Well, but um, yeah. So like it, it's and like as a person who is you know white and female, like it's hard for me to, I, I like I shouldn't. I probably shouldn't give any you know input really. 
as as like I, it's not you know I think, my. I think it's fine for you to have an opinion as long as you're you're not using your opinion to put down another person's opinion or to say that another person is wrong and you are right. I think it's fine for you to have that opinion just as long as you're not using it in an antagonizing way. Yeah, but also I feel like my opinion most of the time is just like, well, they, like, you know, it's hard to say, because, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, I don't, I feel like I see, I did definitely see both sides of that argument, and, like, as a person who would think about casting, like, even in class, you know, when you have people read your screenplay, you have to cast people, and you, you wonder, like, like, I remember when I had this one screenplay I had people reading, it's like, I would cast people who I thought were similar to the characters, and then I would get a reading that I did not like at all. And then I would go back and recast with people I thought just like had better chemistry, but weren't necessarily like the right fit for the character perhaps. And then like, I would get a lot better reading between people who had good chemistry. So then that's like a whole, that's like a whole other can of worms. It's like, then you're thinking about who's getting cast as Serena and like all this other stuff. Like, it's really interesting to think about, but it's also, yeah, like, I can see how that would be totally fraught for them. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so me personally, in regards to, like, you know, Will Smith being cast as Richard Williams, or uh, Mackenzie Davis is the actress's name, who was cast as Harper, uh, Kristen Stewart's girlfriend in Happiest Season. You know, I'm fine with Will Smith playing Richard Williams, even if he's not the right skin color. I'm fine with... Mackenzie Davis playing Harper, even if Mackenzie's straight and the character she's playing is a lesbian, I'm fine with a white man directing a story about a, a uh, Chinese immigrant to America, as long as they, it's told in a respectful and accurate to the culture or, you know, whatever way. Like, yeah. as long as, you know, they're, as, as long as, you know, like, if, if, like a straight person, if a straight woman was cast as a lesbian, but the lesbian was portrayed as, you know, an awful, like, like if, if basically if like they're portraying her as like a really awful person because she's a lesbian, like that's wrong. If a white person directs a movie about a Chinese immigrant, but the movie includes like negative Chinese stereotypes or other Asian stereotypes, that's wrong. Yeah. And, um, but, but overall for me, like I'm okay with, you know, like, different types of different people casting uh, stories that might not necessarily relate to them personally, as long as they, you know, like they do the character or directing duties or whatever justice. And mm -hmm. as long as it's all, you know, like, as long as they have input from actual, uh, in the case of Richard Williams, black people, in the case of Happiest Season, gay, lesbian people, in the case of whatever, a Chinese immigrant, story like actual Chinese immigrants like as long as you have input from like actual people that can relate to the story and as long as you do research and tell the story in a really respectful and honorable way then I'm okay with you know like Will Smith being cast as like Richard Williams or in cases like that yeah I, I think that's a good point like it as long as it's done right it's good like it, because then, like, also, like, I used to do a lot of acting, and it's, like, you get to a point, like, wow, one time I did do, I, I acted as someone, well, I guess they never specified her sexuality, but, like, she was, she was, like, pansexual, I would say, or, <laughs> that, that would be my, as the person who acted her, that would be my interpretation, um, but, like, yeah, and, like, I, I, it's definitely, you know, you get to a point where you're, like, okay, I'm, if I'm acting, like, I also acted as a Scottish person. I'm not a Scottish person, but in one play, I had to have a Scottish accent. And it's like, okay, like, if, as long as I can do this justice and, like, do it right for the people that I'm supposed to be representing, then that's, you know, that's good. And I think also, like, acting is acting at to a certain point. Like, you are not the character and you are, like, you are going to play different characters and different, like, sorts of 
I don't know, things that you don't understand. Like, people will play an abused character when they don't have, you know, trauma. People will play a character who's a spy when they can't, you know, <laughs> do fist fighting or something, you know? Like, I, the, no one's going to be exactly the character that they're playing, so it gets very hard to sort of say, oh, well, you know, uh, you can't play this character because you're not blank, blank, or blank. But I think on the other hand, like, you see shows like, I'm just thinking of Glee for some reason, I guess, because that was sort of a show that had so many, like, marginalized identities and, like, sometimes did them fine, a lot of times did them poorly. Like, it's not aged very well <laughs> looking back, I feel like. Yeah. And, like, definitely, like, you see, like, the characters on the show and you're like, okay, well, like, in some cases they did actually cast like you know people who are members of the lgbtq plus community as as members of the lgbtq plus community on the show but like in other cases like uh kevin what's his name kevin hale or something like that is like playing a person in a wheelchair but he doesn't you know he doesn't really know what that's like and then you actually have Ali Stoker, or Stroker, I'm not sure what her uh, last name is, but she actually is a person in a wheelchair, and she actually plays a person in a wheelchair on the show, and so then it's like, I don't know, I feel like some people would be like, well, obviously she can do it, she can play her own, like, <laughs> she can play someone who understands what she actually understands, so why not have more of that, and they could probably play the character better, if they actually know what the character goes through, like, on a lived basis. And I feel like that actually, and, and that is, like, because also I feel like you get in the trap of, like, sometimes giving actors, giving actors who already have a lot of opportunity, just giving them more opportunity when they get to play, you know, roles that are people who have perhaps been shut out from doing the acting of those roles, like, because of whatever marginalized identity they're like not allowed to be in the acting community and that like hurts them and then they see people who like like I don't know like a trans person who for whatever reason you know people are like oh you you can't act like a act this role and then they see people who aren't trans playing trans people it's like well I could have played that role but then also on the other hand it's like you don't want to have everyone just play to their identity because that's another that's like a whole another thing is like then you're just filling roles with people like you were saying from the beginning like having someone who's darker skinned play her dad just because he has darker skin than will smith is like also a problem <laughs> it's just oh my gosh this is just like these questions are so hard wow yeah, well, they are they are very uh, interesting questions, and they're not easy questions for me to answer either. But uh, but I think that you know everything they just said is really well said, basically. And I think you know you, everything. Yeah, you're doing fine. Uh, you're doing good. But something else I want to bring up is that another recent movie called on Amazon called Sound of Metal, which in which a um, Riz Ahmed plays the lead character in the movie, uh, who is a heavy metal drummer who starts to lose his hearing and eventually goes deaf completely. Now, Riz Ahmed, the actor in real life, is not deaf, and the director of the movie is not deaf, but they, uh, there are other cast members, producers, and consultants for the film who are deaf. And so, and uh, they, and they made, and the filmmakers, uh, the director and Riz Ahmed made sure to, you know, really portray the deaf characters with, you know, with such, like, sympathy and depth, and then uh, they really, you know, got their permission and perspectives on all these different scenes, and I thought that Riz Ahmed did a really good job, and it's a testament to his acting, because he has to, you know, pretend that he's losing his hearing, and he, he does, he did so in a way that, like, really made me thought that he was actually losing his hearing, so... Yeah, I I, really, I, I I would recommend uh, that one as well uh, to any of you out there who have Amazon Prime. And uh, but but yeah, like so, I don't think that you know, like I I don't think that a deaf person 
had to play that main character. I thought that, you know, Riz Ahmed did so in a way that was convincing and respectful. Yeah, I actually saw the ad for that, but I haven't watched it yet, but it looked good. But yeah, that's so interesting because I was also wondering about that. Like, I, it's definitely something you wonder about more now with movies. I wonder, and yeah, so me personally, I think that, you know, it's good when, like, movies have, like, you know, like, good representation, whether it be through the casting or the writing or directing. I think it's good when movies have good, like, moral messages or progressiveness and stuff like that. But uh, something interesting that I want to approach is when a movie does kind of the opposite, like, approach. Like, yeah, a, fa a show that you and I are both really big fans of is The End of the Effing World. And that is a very uh, intentionally, like, vulgar, crass, crude kind of show. The main characters who in the show are children, basically. They're very, like, you know, they're very... What, what's the word? Well, they're uh, be besides, like, rude and vulgar, they're very, like... They, they basically think that they're, like, psychopaths, and, and, and they are kind of, like, psychopaths in, in a way, but, like, basically, there are shows like The End of the Effing World and also another a thing on Amazon called Wayne, where basically, like, you have these characters that are intentionally the opposite, where they're very vulgar and they don't care who they offend, and I want to ask you if you think that, like, shows or movies like that, where you have a very intentionally rude character and politically incorrect character like do you think that they should there should be more like media more media like that yeah that's such a hard question i uh, yeah so like when you go into like you know outside of sort of like should there be like different you know representation of different people and then you go into like moral messaging and stuff like that, that that's like oh my gosh yeah that's like hard because you know I yeah so like uh, <laughs> I feel like I like being like doing creative writing stuff I remember when I was younger like I was very much sort of aware of like if my characters cussed or something like should I let should I let my characters cuss or like should I not cuss because that's bad. It, I'm putting quotation marks. <laughs> I forgot, no one can see because it's a podcast, but I'm doing the quotation marks with my hand. Um, yeah, you know, like it, it, like something, or should my characters be allowed to be violent or something? Like, obviously, in Wayne and the End of the Epic World, that's like a huge part of the story, is like the characters will just be like overly violent or like overly sort of yeah <laughs> it's just like almost over the top like craziness going on and like and and I remember like in the in the and then I remember I was also sort of like should I watch shows or movies with like violence or language or whatever and like I, I for a while I was like no like my characters can't say bad words my characters can't do bad things but then like eventually you get to the point where you're like what the heck, like, your characters have to do something, and, like, only, the only way, like, a story comes is from there being some kind of conflict, and, like, eventually, for me, I was, like, you know, I, I think, like, I would rather try to show sort of a slice of the real, like, something real, or, like, so, like, a real, even if it's not, obviously, a real situation, like, I would like to show sort of a real emotion and a real, like, a real thought, and I feel like that's something I really value in, like, that kind of show, where, like, the characters just say whatever they want, and they are so, like, <laughs> I feel like they're not really, like, they never say anything that's, like, offensive in terms of like what I would think of as like political correctness as so much as like they're just very vulgar and like a, it's like offensive to I don't know the sensibilities or something like I feel like that is very I really like that because I feel like there's just it's hard to sort of to capture like a real somebody's real thoughts and I feel like the, the things that they say in those shows are like they are real thoughts that, like, everyone has, but you just don't say them out loud. Like, you just don't, like, whenever they, like, insult someone or they're like, oh, you look so stupid, I hate you, or like that. Like, I feel like a lot of the time those are things that, like, it's, like, parts of life that are sort of, like, suppressed for whatever reason. 
and you're allowed to like say them i think that's also like a really funny thing about sitcoms like i think that's why sitcoms are so funny because they're like you would never like i would never confront someone about why i'm mad at them just like in the living room but like in a sitcom that happens like everyone just speaks their mind and that's like what's funny and like relatable about them so i i really like that kind of show that is that is partially why people say that media is escapist art form you know like you know in movies and shows people can do and get away with stuff that people can't or shouldn't do in real life and i think that that is uh why that you know there i mean there is i mean in, in this is gonna sound like i'm contradicting myself but i'm really not you know like I, we've been saying throughout this whole podcast that like uh yes you know uh hollywood and society in general is much more aware and trying to be more politically correct progressive and all that but at the same time there is also a lot of you know mindsets and uh, media out there where they take the opposite approach you know like show there are shows about uh really awful people who commit crimes like sopranos and breaking bad and mad men and uh also shows about you know really vulgar uh but also uh misunderstood people like the end of the effing world yeah. and uh, wayne where you know you have these people you know do stuff that they or and say stuff that they shouldn't say or shouldn't do but we're attracted to that and um yeah so like i i think that that is an interesting part of the media industry or at least like the film and tv industry to look at like you know that just that appeal of just like oh they oh man they're, they're, when they do this bad thing or say this bad thing that i know i shouldn't say or do they just look so cool doing it and uh yeah so i, I think that is interesting that we live in, that we are that in where the film industry is uh, excluding COVID, uh, ex like COVID has yeah. changed a lot, but like even before COVID, you know, there was sort of a double like standard of, well, I, that's not the right term, but basically like having both like media that is much more respectful to marginalized group, but then also having media where the main character would not care who he or she uh, offends. Yeah, I feel like also like, I don't know, for me at least, it seems like sort of, e even in those shows, like I think, I think, also you kind of have like, I've never seen all of Fleabag, but Fleabag is kind of similar in that like, whoa, she's just gonna say what she's gonna say, and we're yeah. gonna listen, and oh my gosh, like, people will have their feathers ruffled if they don't want to watch, you know, and like, I feel like that show and shows like Wayne and the End of the Effing World, and also what comes to mind, like, I think a big turning point for me, this is really funny, was watching It, the horror movie. Like, the kids mm. are so foul-mouthed, and, like, just, like, do stupid stuff, and, like, are so, like, sort of mean, but, like, also, that's, right. like, all surface level for, like, what's going on underneath, and they have this really deep friendship, and, like, Ha you know, they, like, they really love each other, and you see that in their actions, and I feel like that, for me, was, like, okay, like, yes, like, this show is, like, on the surface, like, there's blood and gore, and, like, they say mean things to each other, but on, like, the sub-level, it's, like, says a lot about, like, friendship and love and found family and trauma, and I think that's, like, a lot of shows that are sort of very vulgar where the char the main characters just like say whatever they want to say it seems like a lot of them sort of have like an underlying commentary on like trauma and like what what people go through that makes them act certain ways like i feel like the end of the effing world obviously is like super caught up in that and like and, and Wayne as well, and it, obviously, the guy's brother died, and that's sort of the whole thing that sets everything off, and then there was one other movie that we mentioned, but now I don't remember what it was, but yeah, like, all of, oh, Fleabag, Fleabag is the one that I mentioned, um, like, all of those are very wound up in, like, this person has an inner life that's, like, not being well represented, and, like, an inner trauma that, like, isn't being sort of shown to the rest of the world and it's like you get to peek behind the curtain and like see why people act the way they act and like how they can heal and like how they can form deep connections 
even when on the surface, like, it seems like this is just like a, you know, I don't know, they're killing people or they're like saying things that are just horrible. And like, you would never say that about anyone. But like, I think, I think that's another thing about shows is like, I feel like a lot of the time, what, what seems like, oh, this is just senseless stupidity. Like, if you really look deeper, there obviously there's something going on. Uh, maybe not always. <laughs> Some shows are just sort of, you know, whatever. But like, you know, a lot of them, I feel like, that if you if you take the time to really think about the characters, like those are my favorite kinds of shows where like the characters sort of like you, it's it's such like a character study as opposed to maybe like a meaningful like a lot of them sort of the action is like not quite believable you're like do they really just kill a man right now like what just happened or like you know i don't know wayne was like the violence and that was so over the top but like i loved it but like it's 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 more about sort of how the characters develop and like what what they say versus what they do and what they what you see of them versus what you don't see and who they open up to and why and how. I just love that kind of stuff. So that's, yeah, I feel like that's something that is really cool to see in, in shows like that, where it's like, they sort of have a sub level of like being really interested in characters and their sort of like their issues. And I think that's another thing is like, we're what we're much more like aware of sort of like people's mental states now than we were like 10, 20 years ago. Definitely. And so like all these yeah. shows are very informed by like, what is trauma? What is mental illness? Like, what does it mean to, yeah, like you said, like be a psychopath or a sociopath or have like a personality disorder. And I think that's really valuable as well. I'm going to contradict myself <laughs> again by saying this, but um, I, I know I said earlier that media, movies, and shows are escapist entertainment, and that is true, but I think that, you know, the best uh, movies and shows are ones that have, like, an element of reality into it, because, yeah, like, the stuff that happens in Wayne, End of the Effing World, and obviously It, <laughs> that stuff could not, is not possible in real life. Like, in real life, a killer clown named Pennywise does not exist, but the reason why, like, I'm still so attracted to those projects is because the main characters, the kids in all those are written in, are written with, like, depth and, uh, you know, there are aspects of these characters, some of the aspects that, like, are really relatable to me. Uh, like, you know, I, like, I mean, well, obviously, you know, when a kid is picked on in uh, a movie or show, like, Beverly, you know, was picked on in It, I could relate to that because, yeah, I was picked on maybe... I've never had trash thrown on me, but, you know, I can relate to being, you know, picked on and being considered a loser and all that stuff. And, uh, and, and I can relate and I've never, I haven't done anything as bad as, uh, James thinking about, you know, killing Alyssa in the end of the effing world. But I have, you know, uh, had issues with my father and, you know, I have, you know, like, uh, thought, uh, thought that I was a, a psychopath in the moments in my life. And I've thought, you know, bad things and you know all that stuff so like yeah like there are elements to all these things that you know like that I can relate to and that's that's really good I really commend the writers and the actors for really being able to portray these relatable aspects really well under the guise of this like supposedly like unrealistic but it uh, escapist entertainment but I still really enjoy it and relate to it because there are as because the best aspects to it are the ones that in my to me are realistic. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah, like I like the end of the Effing World is my favorite show and it was just so like I remember the first time I ever watched it, I was like, I don't know if I really want to watch this. Like this is like really over the top and like it just seems like these these people are just saying like horrible things like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sit through it and I like put off on watching it for a while and then I think one day I just was like except I was like during it was during like a negative time in my life like I was having a bad time and like I I remember finally I was just like you know what? whatever I'm just gonna watch it because I want to watch it I'm not gonna worry about like if it's a bad bad show in air quotes or not and then like I watched it and I was like I felt so connected to them, like, both, both of their stories, I was, like, there are parts of them that, like, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, because they sort of, 
reveal their like backstories as they go along but like there are like certain parts of ha like you, you and you sort of understand why they feel the way they feel as the story is revealed and like there i remember there was one moment where james sort of like let his guard down and like was saying how he really felt for the first time in a while because he you know his sort of character is like this very stoic like He's, he, you don't think he cares about anyone and he's just like I'm just gonna like do these crazy things and like he has this plan he's gonna kill Alyssa and stuff and he's just like very sort of like uh, stone cold but like there's like a part I think it's like episode like I don't know maybe like five or six where he like is crying and crying and I was like that's so that feels exactly how I feel like I feel I understand how he feels in this moment where he like sort of realizes he's been like you know I don't know suppressing his emotions or whatever I that move oh my gosh that show I watched it so many times when I was like having just like a really hard time because I was like I relate to him so much in that moment like I don't know. It, 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 I think it's cool because those kinds of shows, like, I don't know, they, like, open you up and, like, allow you to sort of engage with, uh, I think that's, yeah, that's another thing why they might be so attractive is that they allow you to engage with, like, an uncomfortable side of things that you might be, like, not, not willing or not ready to, like, confront in your own actual life, but, like, they they bring elements of reality that are uncomfortable. Like they have a bad relationship with their parents or they, you know, are angry about X, Y, or Z, or they like have, you know, stuffed their emotions and now feel really upset. Like those things are very like sort of scary to deal with on your own. But when you see the characters dealing with them, it's like sort of, I don't know, it gives you permission to, to do so yourself. At least for me, <laughs> I was like, I really liked that about um, that show. So yeah, I totally agree. I think I think there's like so so much is real and it like ma the characters are so real even when sort of the things they're doing are crazy. That kind of reminds me of The Breakfast Club. Like I feel like that was the first movie where I was like, oh, these characters like actually have something going on and like I'm sad like thinking and hearing about their lives even though like it's just like such a sort of an absurd idea that they would be like climbing through the ceiling ducts and smoking in the library <laughs> but like I don't know like the way that they are written like you connect with them and you yeah you parts of them are are parts of what you go through as well even if not to that extreme <laughs> and so it's like invites you to engage with sort of those uncomfortable emotions and ideas which is really cool yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. It is uh, really cool and uh, strangely comforting. It, it was to me, yeah. I think I, I don't. I think I remember what you talked about with James crying like that. There, that that was a bit relatable to me because there have definitely been moments in my life where I was definitely su suppressing my emotions and where I just want to cry and cry continually. And uh, without spoiling anything, the recent uh, Pixar movie Soul on Disney Plus that explored an aspect of like my life and current reality that I shouldn't have been uh, neglecting. I I think that it's really good when films and projects like this, you know, like e even if they have like outlandish situations, uh, what's really most important of all in any project, mostly because this is the first step of making any uh, TV show or movie, is the writing. If you can nail the writing and uh, the characters, then, you know, no matter how, what outlandish situations your characters get in, like the main character, Joe, Joe in the Pixar movie Soul on Disney+, Plus, which explored an aspect of my current reality that I didn't want to address, but Pixar Soul kind of made me address. The character Joe was written so well that even though he was in the situation that is not probably not realistic at all, I think I think that you know because like that film had such deep like moral messages and the character main character was so relatable and likable, even with the ridiculous unrealistic situation that he was in, I was still able to really relate to and learn from the movie Soul and the end of the effing world and you know, all these other uh, movies and shows.
Yeah, I agree also, like, learning from them. I feel like, at least when I really like a show, I feel like I sort of start, I think, yeah, or maybe it's just, I don't know if it's really good shows or just shows I really like or what, but, like, I feel like I, I feel like they don't really even need to have a message so much as, like, we create the message, because we, when we <laughs> see them, we internalize the parts that are, are valid to us or are, like, interesting to us, and so, like, <laughs> like you could be watching anything like i was i was um i'm reading this uh manga about these guys who play volleyball high q which is like a really popular anime right now that my friends and i started watching and like it's like you you see like i don't know like at the end they sort of have like the time skip and you skip ahead and you see what they are doing and like all of them have, like, a different job, and I'm, like, that's so cool to me, because I'm, like, about to graduate college, and that, like, makes me feel like I can do whatever I want, even though all these guys did in high school was play volleyball, they, like, all have a future, like, doing all these things, and, like, it's, like, it, I don't think the writer probably meant for, like, someone to be, like, oh, great, like, this random part of the story that's just, like, the epilogue is, like, important to me, but, like, I feel like we just take things that, like, are important to us we allow them to like influence us like also i think in stranger things i was really struck by the character of 11 mm. because she's so like i i really liked her and that was i also watched that like for the first time when i was sort of like in a rough spot and like i feel like she is very sort of she does her own thing and she like doesn't care about what anyone else thinks for the most part especially in the earlier seasons and she's like just very determined to like do the right thing even when it doesn't necessarily benefit her but right. she also like there are like smaller rules that she like flaunts and like doesn't care about and like doesn't you know it doesn't uh, pay attention to and like to me I was like oh that's so cool but like maybe someone else is like looks at Will Byers and is like, oh, I really like Will Byers because he, you know, does all this blah, blah, blah. And, like, he's been through a lot. And he, you know, like, people just pick out sort of what is important to them. And that's, like, how you sort of use, like, you use a character as, like, a, I don't know, like, a crutch or, like, a guidepost to, like, show you maybe how you should be dealing with a situation. I think that's really special. And, like, yeah, in that way, like, Maybe it doesn't even rely on the people making it to, like, make a message. Like, you just make the message yourself because you're watching it and you relate to them. And that's sort of, like, the key ingredient is, like, oh, this character's like me, so I can see how they dealt with this. And maybe, like, even in, like, the end of the epic world, maybe they didn't deal with it very well <laughs> in certain, like, aspects. But, like, then you can see sort of, okay, well, I shouldn't do this, or I should do this, or maybe this is, like, the way to go about something that I'm dealing with and like it's not always going to be perfect like you shouldn't take the advice of every movie but like it's a way to sort of think about and engage with like you as a person by watching like your mirror on the screen wow now I'm getting in film theory with the mirror we talked about that so much in my film theory class I don't know about you I think I've heard of the, I think I know what you're talking about with the mirror theory. I don't remember all of it completely, but I'm pretty sure I've, t I've talked about it in one of my college film classes. But yeah, I completely agree with you. I think that it's really cool when you can uh, take away a moral lesson or a message or something like that, even if it wasn't something that the filmmaker or director was necessarily intending. But I want to start actually uh, wrapping stuff up soon. So do you have any, like, final thoughts on, like, movies uh, having or needing to have, like, an agenda or be politically correct or take the opposite approach of being politically, like, incorrect? Do you have any, like, final thoughts? Oh, my gosh. That's so hard. Um, I feel like... I feel like I've said so much. I feel like I talk so much. I'm sorry. I just love talking about this stuff. No, no, no. I, no the more, the, on this podcast, the more you talk, the better. <laughs> no, but I, I love this kind of stuff. And like, yeah, I, I feel like kind of like the, when we were talking about the Serena Williams one, it's like, you know, it, it's certain, like, I think just people who are making shows should you definitely use good judgment. I think in my opinion, it's probably better to err on the side of, you know, I, I think, I think certain times, like, 
when you say like, oh, I want a representation of real life, some people will take that as an excuse to like allow, like, to, uh, to like perpetuate like negative stereotypes about people or like harmful language or something like that. And I feel like in that case, like, it's much better, in my opinion, to err on the side of, you know, giving people, giving, giving people the benefit of the doubt and, like, representing them in a good way, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, obviously, someone has to be the villain of your story and whatever. Someone has to be the hero or, I mean, if you're writing that kind of story. But, like, it, it definitely, you know, I, but also, like you said, like, we grew up in, in, in like, environments or, like, we've been in environments that are much more progressive. So it's, I, I'm sort of biased towards that, I guess, but I feel like I would lean toward that being, you know, you don't always have to say or do the right thing, but I think in terms of, like, not negatively, like, stereotyping and not feeding into that kind of culture where, like, you, you just lean on, like, old tropes that are negatively impact people or, like, negative language about people that's, like, like, I feel like in the end of the effing world and stuff like that, like, they're mean to people, but it's not, like, because of their identity just because they're they are mean to people <laughs> and they will call across the board and so i feel like that's a different thing than like sort of like zeroing in on someone and like making them like either the scapegoat or like the i don't know like the punching bag of the movie i think is definitely a bad way to go um so i guess those two ideas sort of can live in harmony like you can do both things like you can do something that is just not feeding into negative stereotypes while also still being sort of like whatever we don't care we insult everyone like I don't know I feel like you can do you can do sort of like your own combination of these things which is really interesting and it's like a really interesting question that yeah like I feel like it's hard to answer and also like the even the idea of having a message is like something that I struggle with a lot because like when I used to get in trouble kind of in my creative writing classes for just writing stuff that like wasn't really a story like it was just like I'd write like scenes and like for me that was like enough like I was like I, I want to just see a slice of this person's life and like maybe they dropped their plant or something and that's like the scene for them that's like an emotional moment for them and like for, for, for people who are reading my work they're like what <laughs> and like so I hesitate to say that like a, a movie even has to have like a message or something like I, I feel like I like it best when like it has some things that are like they seem like they're saying something but you sort of have to piece it together in the end i really like that and i also really like you know for but for me like i write sometimes i write things and it's just like a mood or like just like a night a theme or something is what's really important it's not so much like a message of the story if that makes sense so i feel like you know some i don't want to i don't want to be like everyone should have a good message because i don't think that's i think that's sort of reductive as well like there's way more that can be done with the medium that is still really interesting without it having to be sort of one condensed message like you can do it with like a mood or like this this story just shows a bunch of things in different ways like I, we were last night my brother and i did a movie marathon and we watched this movie called vivarium with jesse eisenberg it was really good but like he my brother was like it just feels like they said the same thing lots of different ways. Like, they never, the movie didn't have, like, a huge plot-based thing. Like, it was, like, there's sort of one element, and then they just elaborated on it, and it gave you this really, like, a slice of life, like, a picture of this these people's lives, but it wasn't necessarily, like, telling you a message super overtly. It was, like, you kind of had to figure it out, I guess, if you wanted to, and you had to interpret it, and I think that's important, too. I feel like there's just, like, so much you can do, and it's so cool. That we're lucky to be able to watch and make films. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I, I personally, I get that this isn't for everybody, but I like when films, you know, are a bit more ambiguous in that, you know, you have to interpret exactly what the filmmakers are saying. And, you know, I appreciate, you know, Slice of Life uh, more, like, uh, less plot-driven and more, like, uh, character-driven st yeah. stuff sometimes, and um, I think it is, I think that, you know, overall, you should, like, you know, cast and portray, like, mar marginalized groups and minorities, you should portray them accurately and appropriately, 
But I don't think that it's right to get, like, angry or offended over, like, Will Smith playing Richard Williams or a white man directing a Chinese story unless, you know, they're doing so in, like, a disrespectful or inaccurate, if it's based on a true story, you know, way. Like, I, I think that, you know, it is good for movies to have a moral message or, you know, be politically correct or politically incorrect as long as you're doing so in a purposeful and ultimately respectful way. Because even though uh, James and Alyssa and the end of the effing world say really vulgar and disrespectful things, I don't think that the filmmakers themselves are intending to be disrespectful. Like there's a purpose to James and Alyssa being the way that they are. It's showing, you know, a different part of reality where there are people who, you know, who are there, you know, there, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that there are kids like James and Alyssa out there who, aren't necessarily trying to kill anybody, but who, who feel like very emotionally uh, guarded and, you know, are suppressing, you know, their emotions and who, you know, say stuff uh, that they might not necessarily like really mean, because I don't think that half of the stuff that James and Alyssa say, I don't think that they really, really mean what they're saying. I think that they're just saying that because they don't know what else other emotion uh, to express. And uh, yeah, so I, I think that uh, movies, uh, sh you know, should uh, have uh, more of a like moral, like I think that it's uh, good for a movie to have a moral message or portray a very different uh, part of reality uh, as long as it's with a res in respect and as long as there's like a purpose to it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great way to, like, wrap up. And, like, yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like also I think one thing that I'm sort of, I guess, biased towards is, like, things giving a new perspective. Like, I'm much more willing to sort of be, I don't know, <laughs> I don't want to say lenient, but, like, I guess lenient as a film critic. Like, if I were a film critic, I'm, like, much more sort of willing to give a movie the benefit of the doubt or like a show the benefit of the doubt if it's trying something new and doing something that hasn't been seen before or telling a story that hasn't been told before i feel like that's something that is like that in itself like a lot of people would say oh that's political or something because you're telling the story of somebody who you know they haven't had their story told before but i think like that's good and i think it's important to sort of show slices of life from many different walks of life so i i think that's like one important thing when you're talking about different people and like their stories and like whether you know whether or not we should tell it this way or that way or whatever i feel like it's it's good to go for the stories that haven't been told yet because i think that's like, that's important to tell everybody's story if that makes sense I completely agree with what you just said, and uh, I just want to uh, thank you for being on the podcast. Oh my gosh, thank you! This has mm. been so fun! I Again, I'm sorry, like, I talk so much. I guess I'm an English major, so I just talk a lot. <laughs> like, like, I, like I said before, the more you talk on the podcast, the better. No, this has been amazing! Thank you for, like, letting me be here and have the chance to talk about so many fun... I feel like also I got so many show recommendations and movie recommendations, too. Yeah, um, I would love to have you on the podcast again sometime. Oh my gosh, yeah! I would love it! This would be great! It's, it's super fun, and it's just... It's fun to get to talk about it, you know, talk about questions, questions of film, the big, big questions that hovering over today, the industry, especially when COVID is hopefully dies down and we get to see, you know, new movies. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully sooner than later. And uh, partially why I created this podcast was to talk about, you know, deeper stuff relating to uh, film and media. And uh, because and a lot of my friends in my uh, personal life, like even before COVID, uh, didn't really, you know, talk about stuff like this. So like this has been a great opportunity for me to, you know, delve into, like, deeper philosophical questions regarding film, and, uh, yeah, and uh, thank you again for, you know, being on a podcast and talking about this stuff with me. Yeah, thank you. And also, thank you to all of you out there for listening to another episode of my podcast, Podcast Racing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our conversation, and, uh, yeah, and I hope that all of you are doing well and uh, staying safe out there. Bye.